Qumran is an archaeological site in the West Bank managed by Israel's Qumran National Park. It is located on a dry plateau about a mile from the northwestern shore of the Dead Sea, near the Israeli settlement and kibbutz of Kalyar. The Hellenistic period settlement was constructed during the reign of John Hyrcanus 134-104 BCE or somewhat later, and was occupied most of the time until it was destroyed by the Romans in 68 CE or shortly after. It is best known as the settlement nearest to the Qumran caves where the Dead Sea Scrolls were hidden, caves in the sheer desert cliffs and beneath, in the Mull Terrace. The principal excavations at Qumran were conducted by Roland de Vaux in the 1950s, though several later campaigns at the site have been carried out. History since the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947 to 1956, extensive excavations have taken place in Qumran. Nearly 900 scrolls were discovered. Most were written on parchment and some on papyrus. Cisterns, Jewish ritual baths, and cemeteries have been found along with a dining or assembly room and debris from an upper story alleged by some to have been a scriptorium as well as pottery kilns and a tower. Many scholars believe the location was home to a Jewish sect, probably the Asenis. But, according to Lawrence Schiffman, the rules of the community, its heavy stress on priesthood and the Zadokit legacy, and other details indicate a Sadushan-oriented sect either distinct from or one of the various Asena groupings. Others propose non-sectarian interpretations. Some of these starting with the notion that it was a Hasmonean fort that was later transformed into a villa for a wealthy family, or a production center, perhaps a pottery factory or something similar. A large cemetery was discovered to the east of the site. While most of the graves contain the remains of males, some females were also discovered, though some burials may be from medieval times. Only a small portion of the graves were excavated, as excavating cemeteries is forbidden under Jewish law. Over a thousand bodies are buried at Qumran Cemetery. One theory is that bodies were those of generations of sectarians, while another is that they were brought to Qumran because burial was easier there than in rockier surrounding areas. The scrolls were found in a series of 11 caves around the settlement, some accessible only through the settlement. Some scholars have claimed that the caves were the permanent libraries of the sect, due to the presence of the remains of a shelving system. Other scholars believe that some caves also served as domestic shelters for those living in the area. Many of the texts found in the caves appear to represent widely accepted Jewish beliefs and practices while other texts appear to speak of divergent, unique, or minority interpretations and practices. Some scholars believe that some of these texts describe the beliefs of the inhabitants of Qumran, who may have been a Senis, or the asylum for supporters of the traditional priestly family of the Zadokites against the Hasmonean priest, kings. A literary epistle published in the 1990s expresses reasons for creating a community, some of which resemble Sadushan arguments in the Talmud. Most of the scrolls seem to have been hidden in the caves during the turmoil of the first Jewish revolt, though some of them may have been deposited earlier. Discovery and Excavation Early site analysis The site of Kerbuk Qumran had been known to European explorers since the 19th century. The initial attention of the early explorers was focused on the cemetery, beginning with the Salsi in 1851. In fact, the first excavations at Qumran were burials in the cemetery, conducted by Henri Poul in 1855 followed by Charles Clermont Gano in 1873. Rev. Albert Isaacs, British Council James Finn, and photographer James Graham visited Qumran in December 1856. Isaacs stated regarding Qumran's tower, it can hardly be doubted that this formed a tower or stronghold of some kind. 
The situation is commanding, and well adapted for defensive operations, Finn later suggested Cumran was some ancient fort with a cistern. The British scholar Ernest William Gurney Masterman visited Cumran on several occasions between 1900 and 1901. After observing the positioning of Cumran atop a plateau overlooking the Einfeschke Springs, he concluded the ruins may have very well been once a small fortress. Masterman also questioned why a small fort would require a graveyard of over 1,000 tombs. Gustav Dalman visited Qumran in 1914 and explicitly identified Qumran as a burg or fort. Archaeologist Michael Aviona agreed with Dalman's identification of Qumran as a fort and published a map that identified the remains of Qumran as Part of a string of fortresses along the southeastern Judean border, major excavations full-scale work at the site began after Roland de Vaux and G. Lancaster Harding in 1949 excavated what became known as Cave 1, the first scroll-bearing cave. A cursory surface survey that year produced nothing of interest but continued interest in the scrolls led to a more substantial analysis of the ruins at Qumran in 1951. This analysis yielded traces of pottery closely related to that found in Cave 1. This discovery led to intensive excavations at the site over a period of six seasons under the direction of de Vaux. The Iron Age remains at the site, which were modest but included a LMLK seal, led de Vaux to identify Qumran as the city of salt listed in Josh 15-62. The site, however, may be identified with Sikaka, which is referenced in the same area as the city of salt in Josh 15-61. Sekaka is mentioned in the Copper Scroll, and the waterworks of Sekaka that are described in this source are consistent with those of Qumran. The excavations revealed that after the Iron Age, Qumran was principally in use from the Hasmonean times until some time after the destruction of the temple by Titus in 70 CE. The Vax divided this use into three periods. Period I, the Hasmonean era, which he further divided in two. Period Iowa, the time of John Hyrcanus period Ib, the latter Hasmoneans, ending with an earthquake and fire in 31 BCE. Period II, the Herodian era, starting in 04 BCE on up to the destruction of the site apparently at the hands of the Romans during the Jewish War. Period III, a reoccupation in the ruins. Devax's periodization has been challenged by both Jody Magnus and Yizza Hirschfield. The site that Devax uncovered divides into two main sections. A main building, a squarish structure of two stories featuring a central courtyard and a defensive tower on its northwestern corner, and a secondary building to the west. The excavation revealed a complex water system that had supplied water to several stepped cisterns, some quite large, located in various parts of the site. Two of these cisterns were within the walls of the main building. Both the buildings and the water system evince signs of consistent evolution throughout the life of the settlement, with frequent additions, extensions and improvements. The water channel was raised to carry water to newer assistance farther away and a dam was placed in the upper section of Wadi Qumran to secure more water, which was brought to the site by an aqueduct. Rooms were added, floors were raised, pottery ovens relocated and locations were repurposed. Divox found three inkwells at Qumran and 31, and over the following years more inkwells have come to light with a Qumran origin. Yan Gun Weg identified a fourth, S. Steckol found a fifth, Magen and Peleg found a sixth inkwell, without counting the Einfeschka inkwell or others with debated provenance. That number is more inkwells than found at any other site of the Second Temple period, a significant indication of writing at Qumran. Devax's interpretations Devax interpreted his findings at Qumran based upon information in the Dead Sea Scrolls, which continued to be discovered in the nearby caves throughout his excavations. Devax concluded that the remains at Qumran were left by a sectarian religious community, 
using his excavations as well as textual sources, including the Dead Sea Scrolls and the historical accounts recorded by Pliny the Elder, Philo, and Flavius Josephus, Divarx's conclusion was that the inhabitants of the site were a sect of highly ritualistic Jews called the Asenis, a conclusion that has come to be known as the Qumran Asena hypothesis. This hypothesis suggests that the original residents of the settlement were the Asenis, and that they established the site in the desert for religious purposes. He interpreted the room above Locus 30 as a scriptorium, because he discovered inkwells there. A plastered bench was also discovered in the remains of an upper story. Devax concluded that this was the area where the Asenis could have written some of the Dead Sea Scrolls. De Vaux also interpreted Locus 77 as a refectory, or a community dining hall, based on the discovery of numerous sets of bowls in the nearby pantry of Locus 89. Additionally, De Vaux interpreted many of the numerous dept cisterns as mikvarath or Jewish ritual baths. Due to their similarity to several stepped and partitioned ritual baths near the Jerusalem Temple Mount, Regarding the scrolls, de Vaux cautiously stated that manuscripts were copied in the scriptorium of Qumran. We may also suppose that certain works were composed at Kerbuk Qumran. But beyond this we cannot go. He believed that the Asenis later hid the scrolls in the nearby caves when they felt their safety was in danger. Roland de Vaux died in 1971 without having provided a full report on the excavations at Qumran. In 1986 the École Biblique appointed the Belgian archaeologist Robert Donkiel to the task of publishing the final results of de Vaux's excavations. Preliminary findings were presented at a conference in New York in 1992, but a final report never eventuated. According to Pauline Donkiel Voot, the final report was impossible to write, because many artifacts had been lost or corrupted to fill the gap. The Ecole had a synthesis of de Vaux's field notes published in 1994. This volume included several hundred photographs, 48 pages of measurement, and summary descriptions of the field diaries. An English translation of the field notes synthesis was published in 2003. However, many of the Vaux's archaeological findings from Qumran are still not published and are inaccessible to scholars and the public. Further excavations and surveys Although de Vaux's excavations of Qumran were quite exhaustive, and thereby the most important source of information on the settlement, there have been several excavations since de Vaux finished his work. As de Vaux left little of the settlement unexcavated, later archaeologists have often turned elsewhere to continue research, including dump sites from de Vaux's excavations. During the 1960s, according to Catherine Murphy, there were some unpublished excavations at Qumran by John Allegro and by Solomon Steckol. Steckol also carried out work in the cemetery, excavating 12 tombs. In 1967 restoration work was performed at Qumran by R.W. Dajani of the Department of Antiquities at Jordan. In 1984 and 1985 Joseph Patrick and Yigal Yedin carried out a systematic survey of the caves and pathways around Qumran. Between 1985 to 1991 Patrick excavated five caves, including caves 3Q and 11Q. One of Patrick's conclusions was that the caves did not serve as habitations for the members of the Dead Sea sect, but rather as stores and hiding places. From mid-November 1993 to January 1994 the Israel Antiquities Authority carried out works in the Qumran compound and nearby installations as a part of Operation Scroll, under the direction of Amir Drora and a Yitzhak Magen. In the winter of 1995-1996 and later seasons Magen Broshi and Hanan Eshel carried out further excavations in the caves north of Qumran. They also dug in the cemetery and in Mal Terrace caves. 
In 1996 James Strange and others dug at Qumran using remote sensing equipment. From 1996 to 1999 and later Yitzhak Magen and Yuval Peleg carried out excavations at Qumran under the auspices of the National Parks Authority. Randall Price and Oren Gutfield dug on the Qumran Plateau seasons in 2002, 2004 and 2005.